right. Okay. If you would, only because we have a second here, and we're a bunch of realtors who look for every opportunity we can get, um, could you drop in the chat what city or area you service? I saw one of the question. Uh, let's see. Um, somebody sent me a, a DM. That's what the kids call it. Someone sent me a DM about, uh, is it going to be recorded? Yes, yes, yes. Everybody who's registered, we had a couple hundred people that were like, I'm in, I'm totally registered. I just can't make it at that time. And so my deal for people is always, if you register for one of the things I'm doing, I am happy to send out the recording right after. Totally happy. Um, and then that way, like, if you can be here live, I think it's all the better. Like I all, like as much as I think to myself, like I, re I, I was watching a recording um, of a mastermind with Gary that I couldn't be on. And I'm way more engaged when it's live than when it's recorded. I don't know about you, but that's just like, that's what I do. Um, but I am always happy to send out the recording for those who are registered. So hundred percent. Yes. All right. So we have, let's see. Let's see who we have. Uh, Istanbul, welcome. Thank you. Uh, Auburn, California. Awesome. Shenandoah Valley, Virginia. Very good. Um, Charlotte, North Carolina, Seattle, Washington. Um, remember, this is a great way to build referral networks. Uh, Simi Valley, very good. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, San Juan, welcome. I'll be, in, um, I'll be in San Jose this week. Walnut Creek, very good. Seattle, Laguna Beach, Fort Lauderdale, Sacramento. Michelle Yance, one of my partners. Awesome, very good. Um, Nicole Johnson, Oregon, the Willamette Valley. That is where the greatest wine in the world is from. I'm uh, biased. Um, Leanne, Portland, Oregon. I sure like that place. Uh, Vancouver, uh, Philadelphia, Sacramento, Sacramento, Portland. All right, Wasilla. Hello, David Johnson, Wasilla, Alaska. Um, for those who forgot, that's right next to Russia. Is it too soon? Okay, it's still too soon. Okay, it's been 12 years, still too soon. Okay, fine. Uh, Seattle, Washington, Brentwood, uh, Metro Detroit. All right, let's get started. Um, finally got my sound to work. Okay, Santa Cruz, very good. I'm gonna do the best, <laughs> yeah, too soon. I'm gonna do the best I can. Could you imagine, like, could you imagine being um, a incredibly successful politician and having literally everything you ever said recorded and sent out for the world to hear? Could you imagine? Like, imagine the ridiculous things you and I say, or the ridiculous things that I say at times that I'm like, wow. And I'm glad that not every little thing I say gets taken out of context, right? Good grief, man. Um, if you just heard me on my lead gen calls, it's like, I can't believe I just said that. I totally butchered it. Like we all do it. Um, all right, San Diego. I love San Diego. One of my favorite places. Um, I'll be there again next week. Um, all right. One thing that I wanted to mention real quick before we jump into the slide deck. Um, I was on a call with Gary yesterday. And one of the things that he said, uh, we do a one on one call every week. And one of the things he said yesterday was, it's okay to be worried right now. He said, it's not okay to be paralyzed. There's a difference between the two. He goes, you ought to be worried. He goes, you ought to be concerned and you ought to go, ooh, that's hard. Oof, that's difficult. But that and being stagnated are not the same thing. Does that make sense to everybody? Like there's, I mean, I'm, I'm a reality guy. Like, tell me the reality. Tell me the truth. Um, when I rode an ambulance, uh, when I was an EMT, there were two types of people and type one always wanted to see like what happened and type two didn't want to look. There were two types of people, two types of people. Like imagine having an accident and like the bone in your leg is like sticking out. There's two types of people. One goes, I got to see it. I got to, I got to see it. And the other goes, I ain't looking. I'm not looking down there. Now I'm the person I'm, I'm type one. I just got to see you got to, I mean, as bad as it might be, man, I got to look, I got to see it. Just show me the truth. And so when I think about that, Sedona, Arizona, one of my coolest places, um, one of my favorite cool places um, for me, I like reality around the market. And when I was looking at numbers for September of last year versus September of this year, um, most markets, most major metro markets around the country were down in unit count between 22 and 27%. 
meaning 22, about 25% fewer homes closed in September of 22 versus September of 21. Now, the challenge with that is, remember, the closings in September were pended or put into escrow when? Certainly wasn't September, like maybe August, probably the end of July, second half second half of July through the, the second, you know, through the middle of August is when most of the closings in September were put into escrow. Think about how our market felt in July and August, peak of the summer selling season. And yet that created a 25% deficit in closings from September last year to September this year. So when Gary Keller stands on stage and says, and he was on Inman and said, there's a really good chance that we're going to have 1.3 or 1.4 million fewer home sales in the next 12 months than the last 12 months. You look at those numbers and you go, that's really realistic. Now, the flip side to that, and everybody should hear that number and go, that's tough. And everybody should hear that number and say, cool, that's the reality, back to work. Everybody cool with that? Like it doesn't stop anybody because on one hand, you got 25% less, you got 75% left. We're okay. Like for most of the market, if we dropped, um, if we dropped all the way back to unit count, which we've been pushing like 6 million unit sales a year. And so if we drop down to 4.6 or 4.7 million, is there anybody on here whose goal is more than 4.7 million in a year? per unit count? Of course not. Of course, it's a ridiculous question. In other words, I just have to wake up every day and remind myself, difficult or not, there's more opportunity than I can take. Now, listen to my words. It's not more opportunity than I can have. I don't have anything. It's more opportunity than I can take. Um, you've never heard um, Gary interviewing a mega agent on stage and had her say, hey, last year in the market gave me 300 listings. Nope, you never heard her say that. You heard that mega agent say last year I took 300 listings. Do you get my point? And I know, I know it's just a difference on words, but good grief, it matters. All right, someone says, and 25% of realtors will drop out of the business. Yep, probably. Um, Gary is expecting about 400,000. Um, we're at 1.6 million right now in the US and 400,000. Um, yeah, like you're right in there. Yep, 25%. Um, the challenge is they don't leave immediately, right? They leave slowly. And what I see happening is good, bad, or indifferent, them grabbing a deal or two on the way out, right? Some of the low hanging fruit, like direct friends, direct families, that sort of thing. And so what that means is you and I have to be better. That means you and I have to lead generate a little bit stronger. That means you and I have to be a little bit smarter. That means you and I have to be a little bit faster. And I want you to think before I jump into these slides, um, there's an old, uh, one, of my, one of my best friends, Steve DeLaviaga, um, who today runs the Rise Network, right? He tells a story sometimes when he's on stage and I always love it. You ever hear someone tell a story and no matter how many times they tell it or use the analogy, you always love hearing it. This is mine from him. And he talks about um, the alley cat. And he says, imagine a cat like in, a, in, a, in an alley in downtown Manhattan, right? And that cat has, um, has gotten fat. And so as that fat alley cat is sitting there, it hears a mouse scurry across the road down that alley. And it looks and it goes, meh. That one's too fast. I'll wait for the next mouse. You can see where I'm going at this, right? Like, I'll wait for the next mouse. Nope, that one's too quick. I don't want, nope. Hmm, that one, nah, that one looks skinny, man. I don't want that mouse. I'm going to wait for a fat mouse, one that's easier to catch and a better meal when I catch it. But remember, that alley cat didn't get fat by skipping meals. That alley cat didn't get fat by not chasing every single mouse that peeked its head out in that alley. And I think for you and I, we got to go back to being that alley cat. I think for you and I, we have to go back to the point in our business where every opportunity we chase to the very end, every single, like, remember back, like I've been thinking a lot and talking with my group a lot about, remember back when you were brand new, like your first four months or six months as a realtor, how many leads did you chase down? 
that literally went nowhere, but you chased him to the end because you didn't know, like you didn't know, is this real? Is it not real? Do I put time here? Do I not put time there? In my business with the market shifting where it is right now, I am right back to, if you're taking notes, this is, this is what I'm saying over and over and over, no lead left behind. If it's a potential lead, I am chasing it down. I don't know which ones are real because the market's so weird right now. You have less unit sales going on. We have a um, decrease in price in most markets, but we're still up from a year ago. So there's like a weirdness there. Our pricing hasn't gone down from a year ago, but it's gone down from its peak back this last spring. So it's kind of this weird pricing time. And then on top of that, uh, we still have a lack of really good inventory in most markets. Like, if you could design a perfect storm, you and I are walking through it, man. Like it's a weird time. Like it's just strange. So I always think alley cat and that alley cat, man, it chases every lead. It chases every mouse. And some days it's a little skinny, scrawny mouse. Some days it's a great big fat mouse. Some days it's half a meal. Some days it's three meals, but we chase them all. And I think that's what's going to serve you and I really well during this shift. And I also think it's what's going to serve our clients. I think us getting more and more creative is going to have us creating more deals, which is what we've always called deal creation, where it's like, all right, I'm putting things together. I'm causing business to happen, not just picking up business. So those are like, those are my mindset, you know, ideas and moments back to myself. So all right, Lacey, can you put our uh, Beat the Seller Scrooge, and let me get some better audio. Can you put up our Beat the Seller Scrooge slides? And um, by the way, if anybody wants these, we're happy to um, drop them in the chat for you. We're happy to give them to you. Like you can have them. There's no, there's no secrets here. Um, I've been teaching this for about six years in my own group and just last year and this year started teaching it um, outside. And so the idea behind it is what do you do like in November and December um, to have the best business you possibly can? Most markets, most MLSs go down in November and December. That does, you know, every time I teach this, every time I teach it in person, somebody in the back of the room raises their hand and they go, but Cody, I sell more, December's the best month of the year for me. And I always think, great, congratulations, Scooter. It is not the best month for the MLS. I promise you, unless you're in Vail, Colorado or Steamboat Springs or, or Park City, you know, unless you're a ski resort town like that, December is not the best year in your MLS. I promise you that. And so what you and I have to remember, back when I sold full-time on my own, December was my best month of the year. But I don't confuse that with the market being good. I just didn't love winter sports and I lived in Alaska. And so in December, I worked my ass off because I didn't want to be outside. So of course I had a great month in November and December. All right, are we ready on the uh, slides? All right, so next slide. All right, so Lacey's gonna control them from her side of the office. There's always something fun happening here. All right, uh, we are, if you could help me with this, this is, today's totally free, no money for me, don't need a dime. Um, however, if you could help us with this, a friend of mine is a part of Sell a Home, Save a Child. Uh, it's powered by Forward Edge and the idea behind it, uh, by the way, 100% of the money, if you could drop a dollar or a bazillion dollars, um, your choice, if you could drop a dollar or a bazillion uh, into my Venmo, it's right here on the screen or Cody Gibson at kw.com and PayPal, 100% of the funds will go directly to Sell a Home, Save a Child. This is a good friend of mine, Nick Shivers, who runs an incredible business. By the way, if I'm always looking for what agents to follow, follow Nick Shivers. That guy has an incredible business, does an incredible book of business. Um, he's number seven in the state of Oregon, um, number one in my market center in, in Portland, sells about eh, 400 units a year. The guy's a crusher. So follow him on Instagram. He's always posting something, doing something. Um, go and watch what he's doing, like R&D, what he does. Anyway, one of the things he does is he, he's a part of Sell a Home, Save a Child, and their mission uh, is supporting children that are trapped in poverty reach their full potential by meeting their basic needs. Things like things that you and I take for granted, right? Food, safe water, healthcare, like being able to go to a dentist if you have a toothache, like it's a big deal. Um, um, and empowering them with quality education, vocational training. Um, they're in Cuba, Haiti, Kenya, 
Mexico, Nicaragua, and Uganda. In fact, Nick just sent me a video this morning, um, and he's in he's in Mexico right now today with um, a village with a group of kids that his foundation helps. Anyway, if you could drop a dollar or five, it would just mean the world. Send it straight to me. Um, at the end of the day today, I'll send 100% of those funds plus some of my own to um, to their their group. We would be honored. All right, next slide. All right, know, uh, know your numbers and scripts. There's two things here, and I'm gonna give you 28 different habits or 28 different ideas. By the way, pick two or three. There's nobody on here who's gonna do all 28. Like that's not reality. Pick two or three and say, all right, I'll do that. And then maybe you can do more a different time. Uh, but know your numbers and know your scripts. The numbers right now, the important thing about numbers today is number one, um, what are unit counts doing? Like I just told you, 25% down. There's some markets like Vegas. The Vegas market was down 37% this September versus last September. The Phoenix market, I'm teaching in, 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 in Vegas right now every week, so I know the damn numbers there. The Phoenix market, these are both predictors. Vegas and Phoenix are usually early telltale signs for what happens in the rest of the country. The Phoenix market was down 32% last September versus this September. So know yours and don't be afraid of it. And for me, I don't sugarcoat it. It's not my job to tell people, well, you know, here's four ways to look at it and you could still feel good about it. No, nope. my job is to deliver the facts. My job is to be truthful. My job is to tell people the truth. So know your numbers, know your scripts. On your scripts, remember, um, for what you and I do in real estate, it's more about dialogue than script. If you and I are, are, are um, actors or actresses in a movie, we might follow a script and I say these seven things and you say those seven things. And if you say this, I say this. And then as soon as I say that, you say that and we practice and the camera's right there. Like that's a script. Man, I've taught scripts and dialogues across the country for 20 years. And I've done it full time for the last 12 years for Calvert Williams. And so I'm telling you, it's a dialogue. Like, it's just like, it's like conversation models. They're not, you say these eight things. I mean, it's just to know what to get back on target for. Okay, number two. Um, set a goal to take blank listings during the holidays. So this is where you fill in the blank. I've got some people in my group, United Home Group today works in 130 markets across the country. Uh, that's my expansion group. We're in 28 states and we're now in seven countries, six countries outside of the US. And so in my own group, I've got some people that would say two listings during the holidays. That's appropriate to their business. I got some that would say 20 listings during the holidays. Whatever it is, I do know this. I know whenever I catch myself without a goal, I'm wandering aimlessly. So set a goal. So whatever it is, set a goal, write it on a piece of paper, write it on your forearm, like write it somewhere. What's your goal of how many listings you'll take during the holidays. Now, there's two things when you take listings during the holidays, because you and I are both starting to hear things like, hey, um, let's wait till after the holidays. Um, let's wait till after the first of the year. And I'm going to give you some great scripts and dialogues to battle and deal with that, by the way, are realistic and honest. I do not like scripts and dialogues that are truthy or that are half truth because I have a hard time saying them. If I say something that's not true, I feel like I'm lying to people. And if I feel like I'm lying to people, man, I guarantee that's how they take it. And so I'm going to give you some scripts and dialogues that are absolutely in 99 markets out of 100 in the US today that are absolutely evergreen. They're truthful. They're honest. So set your goal. Uh, one of the people I used to coach, um, his goal was to take six listings um, during the holidays, basically from about now, November through Christmas, his goal was six. And what he did was he wrote six on everything. Like if you were to open his, he sent me a picture of his fridge once. And you know, those little, those little, uh, little dot stickers that you would put on things like at garage sales with like 10 cents or 50 cents. He used those, but it was a six. Every, um, every can of soda or bottle of water, every single condiment, it all had a little sticker that said six. Now I've coached other people that would say 10 or 20. I don't care what the goal is. The goal is respective to where you are right now. None of those goals are good or bad. It's just appropriate to your business. But what I do love is doing it in such a way that you can't get away from it. Like you put that thing on a post-it note and stick it on the dashboard of your car. Don't let it escape you. Now we're going to come back to this. Remember it. Number three, um, know the bubble day in January. Here's what I mean by bubble day in January. Um, each of you, if you go and look in your market, um, you're going to find it's usually, I'll give you, I'll give you a, um, um, a hack. 
it's usually the second or the third Tuesday, not Monday, it's usually the second or third Tuesday in your market in January. Um, and what the bubble day means is this, you have all these people that say, after the holidays, after the holidays, after the holidays, which means uh, by January 1st or 2nd, I mean, no one's calling on the first. So by January two or three or four, you're calling the seller that you had talked with. They said after the holidays, it takes a day of phone tag or two days of tag, you get in touch with them. Then you go to their house, you go back through the listing appointment with them again, you answer all the questions you've already answered two times. Then you have a photographer come out and take photos. That damn thing doesn't go live until about the middle or the third week of January. January. So like the 16th, the 18th, the 20th, I promise you, go and look in your market and you're going to see listings doing this and then this sometime about the middle of the month, like the second or third Tuesday. But it depends on when Tuesday falls, right? If the second Tuesday is like January 9, it's probably the third Tuesday. Uh, but the reason you want to know this, this is why. You know, and I know, and the market getting harder on us, which is good for us, is going to make this more true than ever you're in a competition. Last year, I don't think it mattered. You and I couldn't find enough listings fast enough. And if we took three listings, we somehow ended up with four sales. Go figure. Um, in 2020, same thing. But go back, don't look at 2020 and 2021. I think that they're fake. I think that, well, they're not fake. I think that they're, that they're not accurate depictors of the future. They're two weird years. Go back to 18 and 19. Go look at 18 and 19, 17 if you want, and find the bubble day in your market. Here's why. You're going to talk to every seller. Now, every seller you talk with right now, you're going to tell them, I can realistically make you more money during the holidays. And here's why. Now, it's going to be kind of a pain in the butt. You're going to have to deal with some showings during the holidays. You're going to have to keep the house clean, even while you have the Christmas tree up and you got your Thanksgiving stuff out. All that's true. All that's true. But you're also going to see this. Every active buyer on the market during the holidays, their motivations in eight or nine. No one's out there kicking tires looking at homes for fun during the holidays. Every active seller, their motivation is an eight or a nine as well, maybe a 10. This is the one period of time a year. The one, let me say it again, the one period of time a year, Mr. or Mrs. Seller, Mr. or Mrs. Buyer, every single one of you who's active has motivation which means all the sellers are motivated, all the buyers are motivated. This is going to give you the greatest opportunity for money. Now, the second piece is this. We have a dip in listings. Almost every year, we have a dip of listings in November and December. Because after all, who wants to have their damn house listed? If they don't have to, you don't want people traipsing through your house. And so what you have is you have a, you have a perfect storm for your seller, but you have to know the numbers. Number one, there's fewer listings for you to compete with. Every one of you is back to using the script, which is accurate with your sellers. Listen, we're in a price war and beauty pageant. That's what we're in. And that's a great script to use with your sellers because it's true. We got to look better than the competitors and we've got to be priced more competitively. We have to have the most realistic price a buyer would pay today. In fact, um, quick time out, instead of asking for, I mean, we already know this, instead of asking for price, we already know, let me say it this way. We already know this with buyers, we always say price reduction with sellers. We always say price correction. And that's just one of those little tiny tips. Just like with buyers, we say home and with sellers, we say house. And the reason for that is it, it house is sticks and sheetrock. It takes the emotion out. Home is where you have Christmas breakfast at. And so with buyers, we always say home. With sellers, we always say house because we want to de-emotionalize with our sellers, right? Uh, now, <laughs> these are just those little things. Th that, that tip won't sell 100 homes a year for you. It just won't, but it might sell 10. It might help 10 people sell or buy or be more realistic. And so anything I can do that would help you be richer is what we're going to teach. Um, the truth though, is that during the holidays, you've got less listings, which means you have less competition, which means it's easier to beat your com competition, which means I'm going to make you more money, which means the buyers who are looking December 11 and December 15, instead of being out there Christmas shopping or doing something with their family, they're actually shopping for a home, their motivations through the roof. They're trying to buy something before the holidays or trying to get into a home before school district starts. They're trying to get their kid registered for the second half of the school year. This is all incredibly important. All right, number four. So know your bubble day, go find it. You can find it in 15 minutes. Uh, number four, the decision continuum is king during the holidays. Um, the easiest way to describe the decision continuum 
is in your notes, make a flat line, just, just a, a flat line. Even realtors can understand the directions here. Just a flat line across the paper. Now on the left side, I want you to write no. On the right side, I want you to write yes. The decision continuum states this, nobody is an absolute yes or an absolute no. It's always somewhere in between. Imagine the person who walks down the aisle and gets married. You would think they're an absolute yes until something happens later in life and they slide towards a maybe and then they slide towards an absolute no. All of us know what we're talking about. You have a buyer who buys a, who, who puts an offer on a home. You would think absolute yes until they have the home inspection done. And all of a sudden they move to a maybe and then they move to no, nope, we're gonna go ahead and withdraw the offer. And all of a sudden, you know, people are not an absolute yes or no, which also means, I mean, I've worked on FISBOs and expireds my entire career. And you hear from a sale by owner, I'm not going to, by the way, FISBOs are back. I just did a lead gen session this morning with my own group. We had 36 people on their lead generating all morning. And two of them were just calling FISBOs and expireds. The last two years, we couldn't find FISBOs and expireds to save our skin in most of our markets. And today we got FISBOs and expireds back. Back to my, back to my point. A FISBO says, I'm not going to list with an agent. I'm not going to pay an agent a commission. 89% of the time, they end up paying an agent a commission. So they say no, they're just not a, a yes yet. Give them more information. I heard Gary say it this way in a room once. He was describing the decision continuum. And he said, somebody asked me to lunch. And someone goes, will you go to lunch? And he goes, no. And they go, okay. And so we put a little check mark next to the no. And he goes, now somebody else asked me a better way to go to lunch. And someone goes, well, uh, will you go to lunch? I've got a 2000 person brokerage I'd like to bring to Keller Williams. He goes, yep. Do you get my point to this? It's not absolute no or absolute yes. Number five, we just got to remind ourselves of that. Uh, grab a calendar and get fierce. My friends, here's what you do. I think right now, um, the more archaic we can be, the more money we're going to make. I think you go to the internet machine, you go to the Google later, and you Google November and December, and you just print the damn calendars out. I know that you and I use our phone. I've got an iPhone, I got an iPad, like I got, I got all this stuff. But there's nothing better than actually seeing it on a piece of paper, because it gives you reality. You take those two months, and you take Christmas, you take Thanksgiving, you take New Year's Eve, you take the day after Thanksgiving, whatever it is that you're going to spend with family, and you put great big black X's through those days, and you work every single other day. The challenge is the poorest people I know as realtors, the realtors who make the least amount of money are probably taking Thanksgiving off. They're probably taking Christmas off. The problem is they're taking too many other days off around it. Go ahead and plan those days off. There's nothing wrong with it, but you got to get fierce with everything else. And this might be the time in your career that you burn the candle from both ends. Welcome, welcome to the, welcome to the room. Um, we would say, come on in, the water's fine. We're all working more hours right now. I've got more appointments and more hours being worked right now in my own business than I've had in years. The only time I've worked harder than right now in recent history was um, April and May of 2020, because we had no idea what the hell was going on. Like we didn't know what was going on. So it was just how many of our customers could we talk to? How many calls could we make? How many care calls could we make? How many emails could we send? Uh, for me, how many webinars could I hold? How many people could I talk to? Like it was ridiculous. But in the last 10 years of my career, like I am working more than I've ever worked. Um, and I don't know how else to get through this market. And I think, come on in, the water's fine. So you grab those days, block them off, and you work every other day, all day, every day. Like this is sleeping bag days, which means just like the last time the market shifted, you take your sleeping bag to the office and you lead generate. And then you run home and you have dinner with your husband and kids and you go back to the office, if you will, and you lead gen some more and you sleep in the office if you have to. Like if that's what it takes right now, that's what, well, what's the other alternative? I guess you could lower your goals or live on less. But the people that I know don't want to do that, which means we're going to have to work harder to find our way. We won't forever but we'll have to work harder to find our way. All right, number six, um, holiday marketing plans. This is a big one. All of your active sellers right now, whether it's today or in a week, they're thinking, should I come off the market? So what you want to do is for all of your active sellers, you want to play offense and not defense. It's hard to score on defense. It's easier to score on offense. And so what you would do is you would go to your seller now and say, hey, before we get deeper into November, let's set a time to talk about my holiday marketing plan. 
Now, all of your other people that you would like to list, you tell them, I have a holiday marketing plan for your home. Let's talk about it. Now, a holiday marketing plan, um, you design it. Like it needs to be specific to your market. Here's some that show up on mine. Number one, um, we take holiday marketing plan and we say, number one, uh, we want you to decorate for the holidays. Please don't not go ahead and decorate for the holidays. Number two, what we want you to do is I'm going to take the lockbox off the front door. Now, this is a big one. And a lot of agents don't like doing this. So you do you do you, I'm going to do mine. I'm taking the lockbox off the door. Because what that's going to do is that's going to give my seller peace of mind. No one's going to be showing up unlocking that door while you're trying to decorate the Christmas tree. That's what they're worried about. No one's going to show up for an unannounced showing or let themselves in or what, like they're just, they're worried about it. They got family coming in like this. They're all living their lives. Uh, I'm going to hide that lockbox on the side of the house over there on a hose bib or somewhere else or a back door or something. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to knock down the showings that I allow per week. And again, some agents don't like this, but you do what works for you in your market. For me, for the majority, I'm going to say, listen, part of the holiday marketing plan is we're going to show the home Monday afternoon for like three to five. We're going to show the home Thursday morning from like eight to 10 or nine to 11, whatever works for you and your clients. And then we'll take one weekend day, Sunday from one to four or Saturday from 10 to noon, whatever you like and whatever works in your market. And what you do is you offer three showing times a week. And that tells your seller, listen, I just need the home ready these three times. Don't worry about all these random showings. Now, you and I both know if the other agent is really good and has a really good buyer, they're going to contact you and say, hey, Cody, I looked and my guy is super motivated and he's going to buy a house this week, but those showing times don't work. You and I both know what we're going to do. We're going to call the seller and set a different time. We both know that. But you're going to neck down the amount of showings you have in a smaller amount of time. I've always looked at it like this, and it has worked for years and years and years. I grew up in Alaska. I live in Portland, Oregon today, but I grew up in Alaska. And if you had a bunch of fish in a smaller river, they were easier to catch. And so that's how I look at showings. How many times in your career have you been showing a home to a buyer and there's another buyer in the house at the same time and your buyers are like, they start mean mugging each other, like, get out of my kitchen. Like, I can't like, should we buy this house? You just add a little bit of account, you know, not accountability. You add a little bit of, uh, if you will, competition. And so that might be part of your holiday marketing plan. Another part of your holiday marketing plan for all of your active sellers is you say, listen, before we get any deeper into the holidays, I've already taken care of it. I've got a cleaner who's going to come out every three weeks and help clean up the house. Go ahead and do it. Go ahead and set it up. Maybe you pay for half of it for them. Maybe you pay for all of it for them. Maybe you're really, really, really smart. And throughout the entire year, you're sending all of your people to one or two cleaners. And every time they say, thank you so much for the referral, you say, you're welcome. Now, remember me in December, I need you to clean a few houses for free for me. And they're going to say, no problem. And then in December, you call them and you say, hey, remember those, those 10 referrals I sent? I need you to come back and clean these two homes for free or these three homes for free. So you do what's appropriate to you, but this is an easy way to do it. All right. Number seven, um, set parameters for showings during the holidays. Remember, I like Monday, Thursday, and one weekend day. You choose yours though. You could do an evening, a morning. You could do it per client. You could do it with whatever works for you, but set parameters for showings. Number eight, um, leverage the draw of holiday lights and activities. Every single city in America, um, every city in America has those two or three streets that everybody goes to during the holidays, or they have like that one, um, that one area of town that's really well decorated, or like in Portland, where I live, we have like a raceway, and it's Portland International Raceway, and they have thousands upon thousands upon thousands of visitors who go there. Well, guess what? Anybody who wants to sell on that side of town Man, I'm, I'm saying, listen, you're about to have a 30-day period where tens of thousands of cars are going to be coming by your neighborhood. This is when we list and we get those signs out there. This is where you leverage those additional pieces. In Portland, we have a street called Peacock Lane. Anybody who's in Portland knows exactly what I mean by Peacock Lane. It is the coolest street, every single house. I don't think they mandate it. But you would think anybody who buys on this street has to go through like a vetting process of, hey, are you going to decorate during the holidays and how well will you do it? And everybody knows, like people go to Peacock Lane. 
And I'll bet you in your cities, you have yours. I always forget the name of the one in Seattle, but whoever's in Seattle on here, would you drop in the chat where yours is? I just forget the name of the street or area, but you have yours. Every city does. And what you do this time of year is you go to anybody who might want to sell in those neighborhoods and you say, listen, the one time of year, you're going to have 27,000 cars out here. Yeah, 17th on Capitol. Yep, Candy Cane Lane. That's it. Thank you. Every city has it. Now, is that going to make you rich? No. But is it going to sell two or three homes? Yeah, it absolutely will. So you're going to leverage whatever you can. You leverage whatever you've got. The other thing you can do is this. Uh, big HOAs and big neighborhoods that encourage it. You leverage those and you say, listen, you live in one of those neighborhoods that people drive from their neighborhood to yours to drive through and look at holiday lights or Christmas lights. All right, number nine. Um, open houses near shopping centers, schools, and churches. Man, I cannot tell you how big of a deal this is. Like, think about how busy churches are. Um, like, churches are busy at Christmas time. Like, you have mass, you have Christmas, you have Christmas Eve, you have all that stuff. Leverage those. Costco. Do you know how busy Costco is in November and December? Dude, it's hammered busy. And so anybody you have who's that you could list in those neighborhoods, you go to them and you say, listen, during these six or eight weeks, you're going to have extra cars going to Costco. This is when you list. You, you live right down the street from a mega church. This is when you list. There'll be tens of thousands of people that go to holiday mass here or go to holiday. And again, this will not help you sell a hundred homes this year, but it might help you sell two. And you do this stuff over and over and over. And that's how you build businesses. Um, same thing with schools, right? Like you have busy schools, you've got school plays, you've got functions. It's a busy time of the year. So any little one up that you can get, you want. Now, for my rich realtor friends, the people who do the most amount of business, like they'll go to a listing near a school or a church or a shopping center, like look how busy malls are during the holidays. There might be nobody there on September 10th but you can't find a damn parking spot on, on, on September 10th, but you might not be able to find a parking spot on December 10th. And so you might even, I mean, I wouldn't advocate you go and take free listings. However, you might find that you sell more homes by making sure you have signs up in the right areas of town during that time of year. That's for someone who thinks strategically. All right, number 10, um, counter prospect. For anybody who runs... Um, um, large database business, and especially internet lead gen businesses. So whether you like, like I like to use Sync. Um, I use Sync in 130 cities across the country. Um, I used to be the biggest Boomtown user. I moved to Sync and Boomtown's awesome too. So whether you use Boomtown or Follow Up Boss or you use um, Sync or whatever it is that you use, I like anything that tells me where people are searching. So at any given time, I can go beep, boop, 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 boop. And I can go, I live in Portland, so I'll use that example. I could look and go, okay, in my Portland sync database, these people are all looking at this, um, this side of town, or they're looking at um, um, this price range or this many bedrooms, you know, within this school district or whatever. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go find those listings and counter prospect. I'm going to go back and say, hey, you were searching about a month ago for this part of town. I've got a listing coming up. Do you want to know about it? This is going back to old school real estate where we actually have to sell our listings. As crazy as it sounds, uh, we're blowing the dust off the old scripts like a, just prepare yourself, stay seated. <sighs> An active seller follow-up campaign. I know, I know, it's a ridiculous thought. An active seller follow-up campaign. Back in the old days, when we listed 10 homes, we didn't have 11 closings. We listed 10 homes and we had to say, how do we follow up with these guys? 30 days in, 40 days in, what do we send when we've gone two weeks and no showings? What do we send when we've had 10 showings and no offers? Like, what do we do to stay in touch with them? Because we don't want to lose our active sellers. And so this is where you counter prospect and you take to your buyers upcoming listings. Because what happens is this, every internet lead gen system will tell you November and December, they see a dip in um, traffic. Every one of them will tell you this. If they don't, they're liars, but they all see a dip in traffic because people are just busy. There's more um, school functions, more church functions, more kid functions, more holiday parties at Christmas parties and families and, and gatherings and all this stuff. People are busier. And so what happens is we have less people looking. That doesn't mean we have less people interested. Don't get those confused. This is why counter prospecting is so important. Hey, everybody, this thing's hitting the market. It is the lowest price per square foot um, in XYZ school district. It's a great script that we've seen for four years. 
Take a look at this one. It looks like you were looking for something like this in the past. Counter prospecting is massive for us. All right, number 11. It's also, by the way, go back to number 10 for me. Um, when you go back to having to compete for listings again, this is one way that you win listings. You show up at the listing appointment and you say, listen, in my internet lead generation database, I have beep, boop, boop. I pulled it before I came. I have 72 people who have been looking for this kind of home in this part of town so far this year. The very first thing I'm going to do tonight after I list your house, which is a great script, after I list your house, remember it's house with sellers, home for buyers, is I'm going to go back to the office and I'm going to send participant let's see what do i do with this all right somebody requested something i don't know what it said i just said enable so i'm assuming you wanted something that was uh fine so i hit yes um I'm gonna go back to the office and I'm gonna send a quick message to all 72 people saying, hey, I've got a listing coming up. Do you wanna know about it? As soon as we go back to a market where that matters, it matters a lot. All right, number 11. Um, oh yeah, uh, probably supporting. If you haven't given any money yet to sell a home, save a child, I'm gonna talk as fast as I can and give as much value as I can. Um, if you've got a dollar or five or 50, drop it in there. I would be honored. Please, please, please. Uh, every single dollar will go. We'll be able to match some of those funds. Um, but please, 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 please send the money. All right. Number 12, number 11. All right. Uh, call active listings. I mentioned it a minute ago, but you need to call those active listings. Call before they call you. You need to look down and go, all right, I got five active listings. All five of them are thinking right now, should I withdraw or cancel during the holidays? You want to play offense here, not defense. Don't play defense. Number 12, uh, place a buyer listings in folder. This is one that some of you will hear and go, yeah, that's a good idea, but you won't do. Um, we're going back to old school real estate, which means all of your active buyers, like all of your buyer listing presentations, um, that someone signs a buyer listing contract, like I actually use a buyer listing agreement, um, as crazy as it sounds, like I'll print and I'll stick in a, in a, in a folder. Now, what I'll do this is an iPad, but imagine it's a folder. Uh, what I'll do at a listing appointment is I'll have that folder and I'll say, listen, and here's the script. I'll just say it once. So you got to write it fast. Um, here's the script. There's a hundred things I could show up and tell you that might cause you to think about listing with me. There's only one thing that I could show you that would say you ought to list with me. And that's this. I've got 27 people in here who have one agreed to buy a house, two they're qualified to buy a house. And three, they've signed a contract saying, well, only buy a house from me. The very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go and talk to these 27 people about your home. Now, you and I both know that what most agents do is they list the house, put up a sign, put it in the MLS and pray that it sells. I'm going to prospect to these 27 people, show them that you actually have buyers. This didn't matter the last two or three years. I promise you we're going back to a market where it matters. All right. Number 13, um, get a lender discount and run a December special. Call your favorite um, lender and say, Hey, for anybody who gets pre-qualified in the month of December, would you do uh, a free appraisal? Hmm. That might work. For anybody who gets qualified in the month of December, would you help um, buy their interest rate down by a quarter percent? Um, would you do um, no doc processing fee for $500 off or whatever? Whatever is legit and legal in your market, go get a vendor discount. You could do this with title. You could do it with mortgage. You could do it with your home inspectors. You could say, hey, you can go to your home inspector and say, listen, for anybody who signs a buyer listing contract or buys a home in December, would you give 50 bucks off a home inspection? All you need is an excuse. I want you to write this down, just an excuse to talk to more people. And anytime you have a discount or a deal, it's an excuse. Um, you could do this with house cleaning. It, like it is endless, the amount of things you could do. Another, another thing that you could do, and I hesitated to say this, I've been talking to my group about it for the last month or six weeks, and I hesitated today because it's all, is it November 1? Yeah. Good Lord, it's basically January already. It's November 1, so it's already a little bit late, but I don't think it's too late. Um, I love Christmas, and I'm a great human being, which means tomorrow, Christmas lights go up at my house. That's right, I'm beating everybody this year. Christmas lights go up at my house tomorrow, November the 2nd, I'm that guy. I started playing Christmas music yesterday on Alexa, the whole thing is, I love it. Here's what I want you to do. If, if it's too late this year, do it next year. It's an amazing play. Go find the two Christmas light installers in town that you like. 
and you say, listen, I'd love to send your information to my 1000 people in my database or my 500 people or whatever. My only thing is I'm going to tell them that I've prepaid for half of their light install or 50 bucks off or two free strings of lights or whatever, whatever's appropriate. Now, you should never write a check for that. And I want you to write this down. If you take nothing from today, take this. Your greatest currency is not money. Your greatest currency is relationship and influence. It's not money. The greatest currency you have is not the checks you write. The currency that you have is the relationships you have and the influence you have. So you find your favorite Christmas light installer and you say, hey, I'm going to send this to a thousand of my people. Can you give them 50% off or their first 50 bucks off or two free strings or whatever is appropriate? Then what you do, this is why I hesitated saying it because there's not much time left. You send that to your entire database and you go, hey, I've got uh, these two Christmas light installers. They're awesome. They do a good job. I've already taken care of blank, blank, blank for your home. If you'd like to use them, just use my name when you call them or sign up with me or whatever's appropriate, however you want to do it. Now, if you were to have done that last week, then in the next two weeks, you'd come back and you, and this is now touch two, you'd come back and say, Hey, it's been a couple of weeks. I've had five of my, of my great clients already use them. Here's some pictures of their house. I'm so excited. They look amazing. By the way, quick reminder, there's still time if you want to get yours in. Then what you do is two weeks later about Thanksgiving time. This is why I hesitated saying it about Thanksgiving time. You contact them a third time. This is now touch number three. And you go, Hey, we had 25 people. That's awesome. Here's some of their lights. Their house looks amazing. Hey, if you're going to be gone during the holidays and you're not going to use this coupon, would you like to gift it to a friend or a family member? I'm happy to give it to them on your behalf and in your name. Now what you have is you have this incredible warm referral from somebody saying, well, I'm going to be gone. Give it to my brother-in-law. And you're like, great. What's their name and number? And all of a sudden you're contacting them on there. You get where I'm going with this. Then after the holidays, you send out a fourth touch and you go, hey, here were the three coolest homes I saw of my clients that got decorated during the holidays. Awesome job. Love you guys. Here's the three homes I thought were the greatest or the most, uh, the most uh, creative or whatever. All of a sudden you've got four touches, but I need you to hear this. You've never asked them, who do you know that wants to buy or sell? You've never told them, hey, remember, I'm a realtor when it's time to pay me, which is what they hear when you say I can help you when you need me. Knock it off with that. You've just given value, 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 and you have three or four easy excuses to talk with them. Now, it's November 1, so somebody heard that whole spiel and you're like, damn it, it's too late for me. Somebody else was like, well... I probably can't do all five touches with that, but I could do one or two touches and I'll know something for next Christmas. I looked at the calendar and next year, 2023, Christmas is on it. And so I'll do what I can this year and I'll be better for next Christmas. That's what we call moving forward. I love the old saying, you don't have to be great to start, but you got to start to be great. All right, number 14, um, incentives to make it worth their time. This is where I get in trouble sometimes. Um, I'm the guy who will offer any incentive I can. So imagine um, in another class I teach, um, I teach lead generation strategies and tactics. And one of the strategies I teach, which I'll throw in here real quick, um, is a lead generation routine, uh, like a rhythm. Monday and Tuesday is cold lead generation. That's where you're introducing yourself to people. Think FISBOs, think expireds, think people you've never talked to before. Think people that you have to introduce yourself to. Monday and Tuesday is cold lead gen. You just took the weekend off. Your battery power is highest Monday and Tuesday. Uh, if you ever work expireds or for sale by owners, they list more often on Mondays and Tuesdays because they just had a crappy open house that weekend. It happens. Wednesday is follow-up Wednesdays. Follow-up Wednesdays is where you have a list I just use Excel that you've been talking to. And these are all people that you've been talking to for a week or five weeks or 12 weeks. And they're moving towards listing. They're saying things to you like, well, you know, uh, if we ever list, we're going to list with you or, Hey, when it's time or when we're ready, we're going to list with you. Thursday is database day. Thursdays when you just call people in your database, by the way, on follow-up Wednesdays, there's almost no rejection, zero. On Thursday, the database day, there's zero rejection. These are just people that you know, like you're calling and following up and you go boop, boop, boop. Looks like they went to Disneyland this summer. You give them a call. Hey, how'd that trip to Disneyland go? What are you guys doing for the holidays? Wanted to check in with you. Listen, if you need anything real estate related, that's the script. Uh, I'm just a phone call or a text away. 
That's literally all you have to say. Don't make this harder than it needs to be. If you wait until you always have an amazingly good reason to call people, you won't call them enough. This is ultimately a contact sport and whoever has the most contacts is always going to win eventually. Friday is a free space day. Ever played bingo and you'll admit it to people in public? Um, in the middle of that little card says free space. Everybody gets a free space. So Friday, you can call whoever you want. If you have enough leads, the deal I had with myself on Friday was I didn't lead generate. If I had enough appointments, I didn't lead gen on Friday. I went to a movie or I played golf or I hung out or quite frankly, caught up on all my business. But if I didn't have enough, I had to do whatever it took to set more appointments. Um, so go back, incentives that make it worth their time. This is where, and I don't know how to say this, but this, so I'm just gonna say it. Uh, number one, deals are relationship closures, not relationship openers. Um, a deal to close a relationship makes sense. A deal to open a relationship seems smarmy and cheap. So here's what you would do. I would cruise through my follow-up Wednesdays. I'd call the people on my follow-up Wednesdays and I would say, listen, um, it's November and it's about to be December. This is the slowest time of year for me, but the best time of year for you. And here's why. And you go back and you explain why. And then this is the time of year I might offer all the cleaning as part of my seller's package. I might just flat out say, listen, if you list with me right now, I'll take care of cleaning every week through January. I'll keep your house clean. That's on me. This is the time of year that I might offer more service. Um, if you're going to have a lower commission rate throughout the year, this might be the time that you do it. This might be the time that you say, hey, my goal is to list four homes in November. I've got three listed. I need one more to list and I've got two more days to do it. I'll do whatever I need to, to make sure I hit my numbers. I don't think you're out of line. Now, I think you ought to make sure that you're following any rules your brokerage has and all that stuff. Uh, but I think, I think this is when you do whatever it takes. Like I'm a, I'm a store and if I don't have inventory, I don't have any customers. So I'm real clear, I need inventory. So if I'm gonna be a little bit looser, this is the two months out of the year I'm gonna do it. All right, number 15. And incentives can happen anywhere. They don't have to just be commissionectomies. So please be more creative than that. Uh, market a vendor discount. Remember, go back to your lender, go back to a home inspector, go back to a carpet cleaner, go back to literally anything that you can. And this is when you market a vendor discount. Did you know that carpet companies are slowest in November and December? And every one of your cities has a big Bob's flooring or big Jim's flooring. You, you all know the types, right? Go to those flooring companies and say, listen, you're probably not super busy in December and January or November. Would you be willing to do four, you know, four rooms of carpeting with no install fee? Trust me, they will all cut deals with you. What you do is you take that to your database and it's just an excuse to talk with them. By the way, what are you going to do otherwise? call them and make up something about interest rates going up. Who cares about that? Like give them something, call them with something they might actually use. Um, anything works and nothing doesn't. All right, number 16, uh, do the Facebook A to Z. Facebook A to Z is one of the coolest strategies I can give you. Um, I learned it from an agent named Ryan up in Canada. And what he does is this. And so my group does it as well. Uh, we track all of our production at United Home Group and we track um, source. In our top 10 sources, almost every month falls Facebook A to Z. Almost always shows up in the top 10. Sometimes it's number five or six. It's usually not number two. You know what number one and two is? It's the same as yours. Referrals, repeats, sphere of influence, internet lead gen, FISBOs, it's those types of things. But anything in the top five or six and definitely in the top 10, it's important to me. Here's the Facebook A to Z. All right, you got 26 letters of the alphabet. 30 days in the month. You can get where I'm going with this. Today, you send a direct message to everybody who's A. Tomorrow, you send a direct message to everybody who's B. The next day at C. Everybody understands that. Here's the catch. You can't mention real estate. Don't mention real estate. If you do that, how often can you talk? I mean, you just don't. Just don't. You have the easiest thing on earth in the month of November. Hey, Thanksgiving's coming this year, and I was thankful for you being one of my clients. I hope you have an incredible holiday. Done. Simple as that. You don't need to ask for anything. You don't need to remind them, hey, remember, I love commissions. So when you know about one, call me. Like that's what they hear when you say, I can help you with your real estate needs. They know that. Just drip, just send a message. 
Christmas, you have the next easiest one. January is the next easiest one. Good Lord. January, hope you had an amazing new year. What'd you guys do? Like you could literally copy and paste this. And you've got seven or eight gimmies every single year that are just easy. And that's Facebook A to Z. Um, remember, can't talk about real estate. Number two, keep it short. Like a sentence or two, if every message from you is this long, they're going to quit reading it. One of the greatest lessons taught to me was blessed are the short winded for they're invited back. Um, all right, number 17. Uh, email and call your SOI database to check motivation. The easiest way to do this is to email, call, text, whatever you want to do your SOI. Now here's the problem with SOI. And I think that you should stop for a second and check yourself on what you call SOI. Sphere of influence is not a list of people. That's called a database. Sphere of influence is who in that database. And I think that we forget this as an industry. If you've got a thousand people in your data bank, you do not have a thousand in your SOI. Maybe you have 90 or 100 or 200 influence that when you say something, they stop and listen. If you got a thousand people, names and numbers, a thousand do not stop and listen with what you're saying. So when I say SOI, I mean like actual influence, people that you have influence over. What you do is you email, you call, you text, and you tell them, listen, there's only one time of the year, I gave you the script earlier about everybody having high motivation. Can we allow, and here's the script, can we allow that motivation and the higher price point during the holidays to buy you through the inconvenience of being listed during the holidays. Now, on the buyer side, you say, listen, if you're willing to look at homes and you're willing to make offers on homes during November and December, these sellers who are letting you traipse through their home the week before Christmas, their motivation's through the roof. If there's a time that I can get you closing costs covered or a, a, a better price point or get more repairs covered, this very well might might be it. So it's a conversation that's totally truthful from both sides. All right, number 18. Uh, send a Santa touch letter. I love this one. Most of your database has kids. And most of your database with kids, I mean, anybody who's ever worked in, um, like if you ever worked in like the server industry, or been a bartender or a server or a waitress or a waiter, you know, you know, the easiest way to get a bigger tip from people is make their kids feel good and make them feel good about their kids. Like, you know that. And so here's a Santa touch letter. I used to like to send it and I would take the, I would take a, a letter. Lacey, did you find um, a, to drop in the notes? Okay. So afterwards, Lacey's going to send you for everybody who's registered a direct Google link to where you can just download this thing. And then you could print it off, you can mail it to them. So what I liked doing was I would mail them the letter and it would be like all folded up, you know, in a trifold and it would be in an envelope and it would be like the wish list from the kids to Santa Claus. And of course the parents are like, what are they writing on there? Right now today, kids do it on their iPhone, but stick with me for a second. And so they have the letter, and in the envelope that you send is another envelope and it's pre-addressed to Santa Claus at the North Pole. There's an address that every post office knows that goes to the North Pole and that goes to Santa Claus. And it's just one of those nice touches, whether they do it or don't, doesn't matter. The fact that you stopped in their mind what you were doing and sent it to them, oh my gosh. By the way, it's gonna cost you the pre-addressed envelope for them, printing out the thing on color, you're going to spend 65 cents per touch plus the postage to send it to them. So I guess you're going to be a dollar 25 or a dollar 30 per touch. Pick your favorite hundred people, your top 200 people, whatever's appropriate, send them this. I promise you put this to the test and you come back and tell me if it was worth it or not, because you're going to get people that send you a picture of their kids making a Santa Claus list. And they're going to say, thank you so much for thinking of Johnny and Sally. I promise you, this is a big deal. All right. Number 19. And it's an easy touch. You can also do it electronically. If you don't want to mail it to them, uh, you could do this through uh, Facebook. If you get busy and it doesn't happen, this could be a Facebook A to Z touch. And you could say, hey, here's the link. Here's the letter. Like you could at least do that. You don't have to spend money if you don't want to. Uh, number 19, use deep data like AI. So like artificial intelligence. Um, everybody on here should check out my friend's website, likely.ai, likely.ai. 
my man, Brad owns the company. And what he does is he finds likely sellers. That's why he called it that. And what they do is they use beep, boop, 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 boop. They use artificial intelligence to say in any geographical area, these people based on what they're doing and their activity level online or at the courthouse or somewhere else, all says they're going to be selling in the next six to six to nine months. Some of them don't even know it yet. They're just doing the things that means they're probably going to. They haven't even found it yet. The other thing around this is likely.ai can do a database refresh. If you go to their website, um, Lacey will drop in the, um, in the comments section or afterwards in the email, there's a discount code. If you use my name, I think they give you 200 for free. And what happens is you can drop your database, your CSV file, and what their system will do is go through it and then send it back and say most likely to least likely to do business. Now, is it 100% accurate? No, but the predictability, the predictive analytics around this is astounding. Five years ago, it wasn't. Today, it's wickedly smart. Um, a friend of mine, Pablo, who's one of our partners, ran um, about 600 people directly out of command, his database. And of those 600 people, uh, would you believe that 27 or 28 of them had done a deal in the previous nine months? Now, Pablo didn't get all 28 or 29 of those deals. I think he had seven or eight of them, which meant, oh my gosh, these are 20 people in my database who did a deal and didn't do it with me. Ugh, bad news, but also good news. My database is always doing business. It also showed um, that he had 25 or 30, I forget the exact number, about 25 or 30 that were likely to do business in the next six to nine months. Now, you and I don't care if it's four months or eight months or 12 months, unless you're retiring from the business tomorrow, you don't care. So if it takes 18 months, it doesn't matter. It just says, hey, listen, increase your trajectory with these guys. Make sure these get the Facebook A to Z. Make sure these end up on your Wednesday follow-up list. Make sure these get an extra touch from you. They're likely to be doing something. Um, if you and I owned a car dealership, did you know that something like, I always forget the statistic, but like 70 or 71% of, it's actually an astounding number, 70 or 71% of people who buy a home, buy a new car within four months of buying a home. If you and I owned a car dealership, we would be out there looking and going, cool, who all just bought homes, send them a damn card in the mail about a program that we have going, send them something about a promotion we have going, it would make perfect sense, which by the way, I shared that on a webinar once, and someone sent me an email a week later and said I have two friends who own or run car dealerships in town. And now I'm in business with them. I've gone to them and I've said, hey, Let's share information. I'll tell you who's buying and selling and you can sell cars. You tell me who's buying and selling cars because they have life change. What a great idea. Someone goes in because they're pregnant and they're buying a bigger car or a small, you get my point. They're maybe buying or selling a new home. I think it's brilliant. Number 20, by the way, all these things, none of them alone make you rich. All of them together, you can have any business you want. Number 20, uh, this is circle back to your stale leads this year. Some people on here won't be able to. Number one, maybe the market was so busy, you were just moving as fast as you could. Or maybe number two, you weren't in business. Or number three, you didn't keep track. This is where keeping track matters. This is where your follow-up Wednesday lists, you never retire them. This is where your old FISBOs, you never retire them. Your old expired, you never retire them. You circle back to them towards the end of the year because it's a gimme. All of these old open houses that you had from February or March, and this will be bigger next year than this year, you call them back and go, hey, we kind of lost touch throughout the summer. How's it been going? I wanted to make sure we connected again before the turn of the year. And some of them you're going to find bought from somebody else. Ugh terrible, but it's true. Some of them they'll go, Oh, yeah, we're still looking and you'll re engage. It's just a gimme. It's a free space to be back in touch with people. Um, and this is where you start talking with people and they go, Oh, yeah, we're looking for the first of the blah, 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 blah. All right, number 21. Um, remember, if you haven't donated for sell a home, save a child, drop a dollar, drop a 100. We've seen a couple come through that were already 50 bucks, 100 bucks, 200 bucks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, every single dollar goes to them today. Thank you for doing it. All right, number 21. Um, call expired listings from quarter two and three. I put this here and I almost didn't because most of us don't have a ton of expireds from quarter two this year or quarter three this year. Most of our markets didn't start seeing expireds till quarter three. Man, we've got them today and you're gonna have them in January, February, March. But I put it here because some of your markets do. And even if they don't, well, 
the seller Scrooge is coming next year too. And so I want you to hang on to those expireds that you work in January and February and March, because sometimes circling back to them four months, six months, eight months later is the sweetest spot because you have zero competition. Now, you want to contact them as soon as they expire for sure. And some will list again right away and some won't. But the ones that you call four months and six months later, no one's calling them anymore. You have zero, you have zero traffic on them. All right, number 22. Um, search Fizbo opens, go on, um, go on Craigslist, go on Zillow, go on anywhere you can that for sale by owners, go on Facebook marketplace, anywhere that Fizbos are like, Hey, promoting their own open houses. I don't understand why realtors as a group do not go to Fizbo opens. Number one, they're letting you in the house because it's an open house. Number two, all you have to do is look through the home and you can tell them, Hey, I'm looking at the home. I'm a realtor here in the area and I might have a buyer for it. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's all you got to say. I promise you, put this to the test. Go to 10 for sale by owner opens before the end of the year. And if at least five of them don't ask you about the market or ask you about real estate in general, you call me and I'll buy you lunch anywhere you want to go. They will 100%. They will almost all be like, oh my God, you're a realtor. What's going on out there? How's it going? What are rates doing? What are you finding? What are you seeing? This is the easiest time. By the way, you are good with people. You got in this business because you're good with people. And this is where you got to go get belly to belly with sellers. So search for the FISBO opens and go visit them. They have to let you in. It's an open house. All you got to do is drop the idea that you're a realtor. They will ask you questions. I promise you. All right, next, number 23. Uh, look up your old Fizbos and watch for their sweet spot. The reason I separated Fizbos and expireds is their sweet spot is different. Expireds have two sweet spot, two sweet spots. Expired sweet spot one, as soon as they expire, a certain percentage will relist immediately, whether it's with the same bozo who didn't, I mean, the same realtor who didn't sell the house, or it's a new realtor they think will sell the house. Number one sweet spot is immediately. The second sweet spot for an expired is six or eight or 12 weeks later. It's long enough that they're like, all right, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? And two months later, no one's calling them anymore, except for you. That's the second sweet spot. Now, FISBO's, FISBO's sweet spot is usually one, as soon as they list at FISBO, or two, about week 10. Now, that's not evergreen. Some FISBO's will list on week three or week five or week 12 or week 20 or never. But most of them, as soon as an agent calls them and converts them, or about 10 weeks. Because 10 weeks, they've sat three or four opens, and they're like, all right, it's going to be great. we got an open house coming up, and then nobody comes. Or they go, all right, we're going to do it. We're going to have an open house. We're going to put it on Craigslist. It's going to be awesome. And then five people come, and one of them says, I love your house. I'll call you tomorrow, and I'll write an offer. And they never hear from them again. They just need that to happen two or three times, and their motivation does this. And a lot of FISBOs in the back of their mind, they won't tell you this. They'll say, all right, let's try to sell it ourselves. Let's save the 25 grand. Makes sense to me. Let's save the 25 grand. But if we haven't sold it by X date, then we got to list it. Because after all, we're moving to Ohio, or we're moving to Texas, or we're moving to whatever. Like, they won't tell you this, but that's what many of them tell each other. Like, that's what they tell their spouse. So what you want to think is right away, and then for, for sale by owners, yeah, about week 10, week 12, week nine, somewhere in there. So look up your old ones, look for their sweet spot. All right, number 24. Um, back one to 24. Very good. Uh, send text and handwritten notes. Uh, remember, text messages today, 91% um, of them get opened. 13% of emails get opened. So be careful what you email, be careful what you text. Um, I prefer text. Yes, you need to follow the TCPA. Yes, you need to follow the rules. Those things don't exist to preclude you from doing it. They exist to get you to do it the right way. They exist for you not to break the rules. So send um, a text or a handwritten note with a handwritten note to a for sale by owner or expired. You'll be the only handwritten note in their mailbox. You can deliver it, you can leave it on their door, you can mail it to them in snail mail if you want, you can text it to them. Um, on, remember the blue hyperlink on Craigslist, that blue hyperlink that for sale by owners might use um, is usually good for seven days. And you might not have their email address, but you can grab that blue hyperlink and for seven days, whatever you send, the mail relay will get it in front of them. We used to build campaign after campaign based around that. Now on the text messages, there's some rules around text message. Rule number one, 
misspelled words get a higher response rate. There's two types of people on here. Type one, you double check your text before you sending it. Type two, you just send it and you're like, ah, they'll figure it out. They know I didn't mean duck. I don't even like hunting. Like there's two types of people. And so we know that a misspelled word or a grammatical error gets a higher response rate. Number two, and I wish we had more time, I'd go deeper in this. Um, number two, an emoji gets a higher response rate. So don't be afraid to drop an emoji in there. You get a higher response rate. Remember, people text, it's very personal. Uh, remember the last time you suffered through a political election, you saw more and more texts, but you're already seeing them. I had five, five yesterday. We have a giant re-election in Oregon, like most of the country does right now. And I'm getting text messages because they know 91% get opened. All right, I wish I can go further on that, but I can't. We're just running out of time. Number 25. Uh, look for withdrawn listings. This is a big one. And I have to say it and make sure that I say it correctly. You are not prospecting to the owners of withdrawn listings. Remember, expireds prospect the heck out of it. Canceled prospect the heck out of it. Withdrawns, they are still absolutely still listed. They still have a listing service contract. They're withdrawn from the MLS. So you have two choices here. Choice number one, you can call the seller and say, hey, I saw that your listing was withdrawn. Um, are you coming back on for showings? And or should I just call your agent? It looks like you're listed with so-and-so. They're a great agent. You could say that. I would just call the agent directly and be like, hey, Bob, I saw that you've got a withdrawn listing. Um, is this guy still willing to show it? This is a great play for your buyers. As much as our sellers should stay on the market, and I've already shared with you all the reasons why they'll make more money, and that's true in your market nine times out of 10, there are still people who will withdraw during the holidays. This is gold for your buyer. Two reasons. Number one, it's not list, I mean, it's listed, but it's not active. No one else is looking at it. So you're not competing with anybody. Number two, you might put together a really good deal for your buyer. And so go look up those withdrawals. Like you've got a buyer that, and the weird thing about our market is that we're still like tight inventory. Like it's a weird market right now. And so go and search these withdrawals. There won't be a ton today, but you come back the 15th of November, there'll be more. You come back the 10th, 12th, 14th, 20th of December, more, more, more. Don't be afraid to call those listing agents and say, hey, I got a buyer looking for this. Can we go show it? You'll find the answer is usually yes. All right, number 26. Um, leverage a dialer. I hesitate to put this on here because people get so sideways with dialers. Um, dialers aren't bad. Using dialers the wrong way is bad. So I like to use land voice. Um, I use land voice in all um, 130 markets that I'm in. If you want to look at land voice, go to their website. You can use my name. They'll give you a discount. Um, I don't make any money, but if you can leverage my relationship and make some money, awesome. Um, but we use a dialer. Now, the challenge is we don't use multi-line dialers. That's where you tend to get in trouble. The reason I like dialers is two reasons. One, I don't have to keep track of what I'm doing. It'll tell me at the end, here's who I called. Here's how many voicemails I left. Like then I can just download the information. I don't have to write it all out. The second thing is I can pre-record a voicemail. Instead of saying the same voicemail 80 times during my call block, I can record one or two amazing voicemails and say, okay, this one gets voicemail one, that one gets voicemail two. But I still use a single line dialer. I'm very, like I'm, I'm leery as in I won't use one that calls four and hangs up on three and connects to like, those are the ones that get you in tons of trouble. Uh, by the way, make sure your lists are screened. Um, as long as you do those things, you can use, you could use dialers. So you might as well do it. Just do it right. All right. Number, we're just trying to get more work done in less time. Number 27, uh, price increases. This one throws realtors for a loop. But remember, in most MLSs, any activity bumps it back up to, and I'm going to use the term hot sheet, which is different in every market. But the hot sheet means like this one had a price reduction. Um, this one changed this, this one did that. Like anything you can do, don't be afraid to get creative. Like you might have a listing that you say, listen, let's increase the price 20 grand and offer a full kitchen remodel. Like that's an option. That's an idea. It gets it back on the hot sheet, gets it back in front of people. So don't be shy about doing a price increase if, if it's, if it's, if it's 
appropriate for the listing that you have. Um, it just moves it forward in the, in the hot sheet. Also, this is where you change photos. Like you go and you do all new photos. If you've got listings that are during the holidays, then maybe you take new photos again that you show it all decked out or uh, decorated for the holidays, which brings me to another point that I haven't had a chance to make yet. The other reason that you would want to get your listing signed, now you want them to sign right now and go active right now and they'll make more money. However, the bubble date, Remember I talked about the bubble date, the second or third Tuesday? This is an easy conversation with a seller to say, listen, here's when we're going to have it listed. But if we wait till January 2, we're going to miss the mark. And we're going to get listed on the 16th or the 15th, or the 20th with everybody else. And you've got more competition. So let's do this. I'll come out now. We'll sign the listing contract. We can, we can uh, do it accurate and correct in the MLS. And what we can do is we can take photos now before it's decorated for the holidays. That way you have evergreen photos in January. And what we're going to do is we're going to be ready to go live on January 2 or January 3. Instead of you and I connecting on the 2nd and then listing on the 18th with everybody else, we're going to go live on the 3rd or the 4th. We still have a lack of inventory. Go and show them the market. If that's true in your market, you can say it with a straight face and it's the truth. So that will help you. All right, number 28. Um, use a buyer brought by sign. This is something that we used to do in the old market that we're going back to. Everything moved so fast in the last two years, we stopped doing it. But one of the greatest things you can do on the buyer side of your business is as soon as the listing agent sign comes down, your sign goes up. Now, what you do is in your buyer, um, your buyer presentation, you let them know, hey, when you buy a house from me, uh, when the sign comes down, uh, I'd like the right to put a, a sign up that looks like a for sale sign, but it won't say for sale and there's no lockbox or anything. It just says buyer represented by or buyer brought by. Now, I believe in telling people the truth. And so I would tell my buyer, listen, the reason I'd put this up is that somebody will see that I sold you the house and they might want me to sell theirs which means I'm gonna take that listing and go show it to all my buyers. In fact, when you and I start looking on the market, I might have one or two to show you that came from somebody else's buyer sold by or buyer brought by sign. Uh, did you know that 90% of the buyers say, yeah, no problem. One in 10 goes no, or I don't want to, or I'd prefer not, and you say no problem but 90% say, of course, no big deal. Now, here's what you do. You use my friend Rob at Impact Signs. Check out impactsigns.com. He has the best price and does the best signs I've ever, ever seen. Um, that guy will FedEx them to you overnight. It's awesome. He does a great job. You tell him that I sent you and he will treat you like royalty. Anyway, here's the deal. Plus he was a realtor, still is, but I met him as a real estate agent. So he understands our life. Anyway, you have him build you a couple of signs and they look auspiciously like a for sale sign, but they don't say for sale. So you're not breaking any rules. Instead of saying for sale, it says buyer represented by, buyer brought by, buyer secured by, whatever verbiage works for your broker and you and your market. I do believe on this stuff, asking broker permission makes sense. Like, hey, how do I do this? Um, what you do is you put that sign up, but it looks a lot like a for sale sign. So someone driving 15 miles an hour past it might call you thinking the house is for sale. You and I both know exactly how to, how to convert that. It also gives us a reason. It's one of my favorite things to send to the neighborhood. I'll send out a mailer after we sell a house and the mailer says something like, hey, you might've seen a for sale sign in the neighborhood, but now you've seen my sign that shows you who actually had the buyer. Remember, I believe in the market we're going into, whoever has the buyers gets to win the game at this. And so we'll send a mailer that says, hey, maybe you've seen our marketing, we actually brought the buyer. In fact, we have another buyer who's interested in the same kind of home in the same neighborhood. If you're thinking of selling, you get the point, like you know how to convert all this. All right, next. Number 29 is the unsolicited API. We'll end with this one. The unsolicited API um, is the absorption-based pricing index. It sounds a little bit like a CMA because it kind of is. Remember, I mentioned my friend Nick Shivers on the front end of this. And Nick, of course, is who we're raising money for, for uh, Sell a Home, Save a Child. Incredible. If you haven't had a chance to give, please give. Five bucks, 10 bucks. I've seen some that are 100 or 200. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, I learned this from him. He doesn't do CMAs. He does absorption-based pricing index. Now, one of the reasons I adopted it was I always want to look different. 
And I want to look different in every way I can. If everybody in my market uses the same swinging open house signs, I'm going to use the tall sandwich board open house signs. If everybody in my market uses a white sign hanger colonial post, I'm going to use a black one. I'm just going to look different. I don't want to look like every other realtor. I already fight the stigma and the challenge that all realtors are the same. You and I know we're not, but our customers think we are. So I'm going to do anything I can, including what I call things. Now, we use this in our marketing. And in, in the 52 list or the 51 list that I teach, I go deeper into the script around this. Uh, but today I can give you this part. An API is an absorption-based pricing index. It looks a lot like a CMA because it's very similar. However, it's truthful. Absorption rate is more important today than ever because you and I are going on listing appointments and the CMA says the house is worth 700. But absorption rate says the house is worth 625 because we're using historical data from four months and six months ago in a very different market with interest rates half of where they are today. And those homes were selling for 700. You've got to be honest with people and say, yeah, I could get you an appraisal at 700. We're not getting a buyer at 700. Two very different things. In fact, one of the things that we're telling our sellers right now is we're preparing them for high appraisals. We're preparing them that, yeah, we sold the home for 420. There's a pretty good chance we're going to have an appraisal at 440. And here's what I want you to think when it happens. If you'd have sold six months ago, we probably would have got 440. It's not six months ago. Now, the market dictates that. The second thing, though, is interest rates have dictated that. And you could say with a straight face and be correct, listen, it's more expensive. Your house is $500 more a month for the buyer than it was four months ago or eight months ago. That changes the price. Absorption rate, everybody knows this, but let me just remind you, absorption rate, all the active listings in this price range divided by how many per month are currently selling tells you how much inventory you have or the absorption rate. Do we have four weeks, six weeks, nine weeks? In almost 100% of the markets, you have a longer absorption rate than you had in the spring of this year, than you had in the winter of last year, than you had in the summer of the year before. Like the absorption rate is getting wider and wider, even if you don't have that many more listings. And that's what's weird about our market. A lot of our markets have eight or 10 or 12% more listings, not a ton, but the absorption rate is doubling and tripling. In other words, it used to be three weeks worth of inventory. Now we got six. It used to be six weeks worth of inventory. Now we're seeing 10 and 12 weeks worth of inventory, which means prices, softening closing costs. The unsolicited one is this, and I'll end with this. Uh, my intention was to go 75 minutes and now we're at 85 minutes. So sorry that we're late. Uh, the unsolicited API is where you email out to your database. And I've only seen it work like this. The script is this. Dear, I don't know why I'm texting. Uh, dear Bob, we were doing some research on your, on your, um, on your real estate holdings. We were doing some research on your real estate holdings. That's the important part. You sound like an expert. It looks like your home is worth about blank in this market. Now the blank is a blue link. The reason that's important, you don't embed the PDF. You use some type of website, whether it's the back end of sync or command or something else. Um, you use a, a, a website that they click that it takes them there that then you have eyeballs. So you see who looked at it. Now, when you send 10 of these out every week, then you go back and boop, 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 boop. You look and you go, all right, who opened it? The person who opened it four times, that's who you call today. The person who hasn't opened it, you call and you say, hey, have you had a chance to see that yet? Were you interested in that? Very few people will not click on it. But the person who's clicked three or four or five times in three days, you can tell that's where their motivation's at. It just tells you call them faster. It just tells you increase your activity with them. It just gives you some eyeballs. Now, what you don't do is you don't call them and say, hey, I see you open the email four times. Four o'clock yesterday afternoon, 5.15 in the evening, this morning at five, what the hell were you doing up at five looking at this? And then just now at 9.30, you don't tell them that because that makes you very creepy. You don't tell them that. You just call and play dumb. You're like, hey, 
Did you see the email? You already know the answers. Yes. Did you have a chance to look? You already know the answers. Yes. You just ask them the questions. And what you'll do is you'll uncover your next listings. All right, Lacey, was there any more? Was 29 the end? Okay, so that this is the end. Um, remember, if you haven't had a chance to give, please give a dollar, give 10, give 100. If you think we did a good job today, I donated my time, don't need a single dollar for it. It's my pleasure to be here to help you beat your seller Scrooge. If you haven't had a chance to give, please give either via Venmo or PayPal. If you want to give a different way, just tell me, like, we'll do whatever. If you email me and say, Hey, code, I'll mail you a check. I'm just going to add that today. And then you mail me a check when it's appropriate for you. Um, I'm easy to find Cody Gibson at kw.com. Um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being on here. I hope you took one or two or 10 ideas that will help you sell a couple more homes during the holidays. It's a hard time, but it doesn't have to be but it will be for most of your competitors. It will be for most of the MLS. It doesn't have to be for you. So I hope you enjoyed this. Um, Lacey will drop the replay link if you wanted to grab some of this. I know, I know, I know, I talk fast, I know. And so if you caught something and you wanna go back and listen to it, we're happy to give it to you. Thank you for being here. If I don't see you again before the holidays, have an incredible Thanksgiving, the very best Christmas in whichever way you spend or choose to celebrate the holidays. I hope they're amazing. Talk to you next time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Cody. Thank you, guys. Thank Have you, a Cody. Day. Bye. See you later. Thank you.